I thank you, Father God, that you dropped down and you met us. And that, Father God, you did a powerful work in each one of our lives tonight. Father God, continue to change us, rearrange us, until we become the perfect vessel of honor that you created us to be. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, everybody judges and judges and judges. Everybody says, look, they're a drug addict. Look, they're an alcoholic. Look, they're this or that. But do you know if you're a glutton, you have, you're a, you, that's an addiction. Because all you think about is food. And so you're pointing your finger at a drug addict that all he thinks about is another high. And God told me, he says, what's the problem here? Come on, what is the problem here? That's an addiction. And just like Mandisa said, she said that every time she got down, the first thing she did was reach, she reached for food. And she ate herself into whatever. You did the same thing, and God's tired of us who are who are gluttons and what reach for food all the time and can't give up food. He's tired of us judging those who can't give up a needle or can't give up a bottle. And he wants us to get out of that junk. And he wants us to love one another and love him first. Love yourself, then love one another. I don't know about you, but I do know that the second coming of Jesus is going to be sooner than we think. And God has been trying to get you to understand that. And I don't know why you can't understand that. And he's also trying to get you to the place where you'll finally give in and trust him with all of your heart. He's tired of pretend Christians. He's tired of you, you know, profess to be a child of God, but you act like the child of the devil. And this is really a serious time in our walk with God. Well, this is what God gave me this morning early for tonight. So let's see what he has to say. Promises fulfilled is what I titled it. Promises are being fulfilled even as we speak, period. God said so. The time has come for the fulfillment of all that I have spoken over your lives. Now, if you're going to sit there and doubt and unbelief, that's not going to happen for you. He said, time has come for the fulfillment of all that I've spoken over your lives. Even in the midst of all the end time signs going on around about, around you, I am blessing. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. God is blessing you. But you have to believe that to receive that. Your blessing can go right on by you and you never get it if you still if you continue to walk the way you're walking. Then God said, I'm blessing your steadfastness, your willingness to lose it all for my name's sake, and because you ran to the cross instead of the world. This is the three reasons why you're being blessed. I'm blessing your steadfastness, your willingness to lose it all all for my name's sake and because you ran to the cross <clears throat> instead of the world. Now, if you meet that criteria, you're all right. But if you didn't, you're going to lose out on your promises from God. The, God said, the enemy has thrown everything at you, but you have not wavered. Check yourself out. Is this really you? He brought out the top guns in his armory, but you stood firm. At times he leveled your faith. But because he could not steal from you, you built up your most holy faith once again. And see, a lot of people, their faith does wane when they're under a lot of heavy artillery from the enemy. But you don't stop there. You build up your faith again, and you move forward. Your momentum increased as you went after the flood tide of glory. Your resilience is a t testament to your strength and commitment. Your resilience is a testament to your strength and commitment. Satan's primary goal in the thousands of his various attacks on us is to take down our faith. 
He's been after our faith ever since day one. God has preached about faith from day one. And he continues to tell us, build up your most holy faith. And then I just heard in a tabernacle of praise. That's how you build your faith. That's one way to build your faith up is to praise God instead of giving in to the wiles of the enemy. God said, my glory is dropping in all of its fullness upon those who stood the test of time. It is falling upon those who would not give up no matter the circumstances. And in this room, each one of you know who, if you meet that criteria or not. You are the warriors that stood steadfast in the furnace of affliction time after time. You are the great warriors that I have pulled forth from the backside of the desert. And you are standing in the front line completely clothed in your righteous armor. Let's read that again, Brad. My glory is dropping in all of its fullness upon those who stood the test of time. It is falling upon those who would not give up no matter the circumstances. You are the warriors that stood steadfast in the furnace of affliction time after time. You are the great warriors that I have pulled forth from the backside of the desert, and you are standing in the front line completely clothed in your righteous armor. Only you know if you meet the, that criteria. And God said, so many sitting in the house of God fool their own selves, pretending there's something they are not. God says, monkey business is over, and it is now time to do or die. You have chosen to do, and do you shall, for I have entrusted you with the very best heaven has, and you are being sent to the nations. I thought it was so powerful when God met us and told us to come to him. And then that next song was so fit right on in, didn't it? See, God knows exactly what he's doing. If you walk in, your, in the spirit and you allow God to move you in every area of your life, everything runs smoothly. Everything comes in line. Then God said, like Peter, you will see multiple miracles and you shall see the blinded eyes open to the truth of my word. I want you to remember that scripture. I mean, that word, what he's saying there. You shall see the blinded eyes open. Then he said, to the truth of my word. In John 9, 39, Jesus came and opened physical and spiritually blind eyes. He said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become become blind. He was prophesied to be a light in one who would open blind eyes as it is written in Isaiah 42, 6 through 7. Now I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, all right? There is no fool like an old fool, God said. So if you read Ecclesiastes 4, 13 through 15, you'll find that there. The emotions are running wild at this given time because my people do not know the truth of my word. You will be sent into the nations with full knowledge of what my word is saying and how it works for your good and my glory. Now we all know that God is opening up the word to us and so we see things differently than what we've seen for years. We're saying, oh, that's what that means. And you know, one pastor will get a scripture and they'll, they'll teach on it and, and somebody else, another pastor will grab a hold of that pastor's word and they'll next thing you know, everybody's preaching on it, but is it the truth? Everybody should be getting into the word and getting the revelation for themselves. We, and, it, and I know for a fact that's what happened in the years before. One pastor would preach it and after all, he was God himself. And so everybody preached the same word. And it was twisted and it wasn't right. But God's changing all that now. Not where I'm at. Steadfastness is the word of the hour. Stay steadfast in who you are in me. And then all of heaven will be released upon you. And you shall go forth tearing down the kingdom of darkness. First Corinthians 15, 58 
being steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Being steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Steadfastness means standing firm and not moving. Steadfastness in Christ means unwavering faith in him in obedience to his commandments, including receiving ordinances and making and keeping covenants. Steadfastness in the Bible refers to the quality of being firm, unwavering, and committed in faith in obedience to God. Enduring trials and persevering in difficult circumstances. Remaining faithful to God's word. Clinging firmly to Christ and not shifting from the hope held out in the gospel. You know, sometimes you know that God's called you to do something. And everybody around about you is saying you're nuts. And, and they'll go at, to any extreme to prove that you're not God's child. This is when you have to really be steadfast. This is when you really have to know that you know that you know that God, that you are God's child. Whether he calls you into a ministry or not doesn't matter. What matters is that you know that you are a true child of God. And if all you do is clean the church, you're the true child of God. All right? This is where the church fails. They're not steadfast. One little wind blows and they run with it. Somebody looks at you crosswise and you run with that. Or is it somebody gives you a, you know, a false prophetic word? Shouldn't kill you, but it does. Just throw the thing in the trash and keep moving on with God. God told us that there's, from day one there's false prophets. In the Old Testament there was false prophets. So if my daddy always told me, then my daddy in heaven always told me, if the shoe fits, put it on me. And my birthday father said, if it doesn't, don't worry about it. And that's what God's telling us. If the shoe fits, put it on. And if, and if, you, if it fits you know, and you put it on, then take it to God and let him help you with it. But if it doesn't fit, don't worry about it. Are you listening? Because this, this is where the devil's trying to, to take us down. All right, Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, the phrase setting the captives free carries a prayerful message of liberation and freedom. It is often associated with spiritual or emotional release and has been deep roots in the word. We are supposed to be setting the captives free, not constantly setting ourselves free. And God is saying that, you know, he's been telling us over and over again, we're, we're beyond that. We are supposed to be free so that he can send us to set the captives free. God said, do you understand that phrase means setting the captives free with the truth of my word? See, many do not understand what they are reading and therefore cannot set the captives free. This is the time and season I want the deepness of my word revealed to the lost through my dedicated ones. It's you and I. I already said, do you, do you understand the phrase, that phrase means setting the captives free with the truth of my word? doesn't mean doing deliverance. Do you know how many people are bound up because they were taught the, the word wrongly? And because they did not read it themselves, they believed what they were told, and they got into bondage, and they're, in, they're, they're held captive with that wrong teaching. You know, my sister, she's passed away now, but she used to go to a church in, in Virginia, in the hills there in Virginia, and, and I went with them one time when I was there. And I said to her, and I could, nobody had a Bible. They didn't have everything up on the wall. And he was reading the word, and he twisted that word so bad. And when we got home, I said to my sister and her husband, I said, you should not go to that church because that man does not know his word. And he's twisting it, and he's messing you people up. 
Well, they wouldn't leave, the, the man wouldn't leave the church, and of course she followed with him, and come to find out he, he was in adultery and everything else. But nobody ever opened her word to, to find out the truth for themselves. So they're, they are held captive with that untruth. What God is wanting us to do now in this season is t to know the word, know the truth of the word, and then carry it to the people that are in bondage with the word. All right, the phrase once saved, always saved. How, long, how many years has that been going around the circle? And that's not true. That's not true. And to, even today, people come in here and won't believe that that's not true. They don't believe the scripture that God says, work out your salvation. How? Daily. It, it doesn't say just say, I received Jesus and then you're forever going to go to heaven. It doesn't say that. You have to, once you do that, then you have to work out your salvation. You have to allow the word to change you and rearrange things in your, in your little pea brain up here. You know, so that you become a true child of God. God said, "This is a time and under this is a time and season. I want the deepness of my word revealed to the lost through my dedicated ones. Arbitrary is being spoken even at this given time. Or an arbitrary means, <laughs> yes, Alan. That's what I did too when he said, that. <laughs> based on rammed and choice or personal whim rather than any reason or system." Twisting the word to suit your desires. That's what arbitrary means in, through the Bible. And people are out there twisting the word to make it say whatever they want it to say. They're rewriting the Bible again over and over and over again because they don't like the way it's worded. In other words, they're saying that God, the God of the universe, doesn't know what he's doing and they're, they're more versed than, they, than God is and so they're going to tell you the truth. In a new word. God said, many are not seeking my face. They are going by what they think and feel. That's what that word arbitrary means. This will cause the church to stumble and fall. Those who are doing this atrocity will see the error of their ways only as you go forth speaking and demonstrating the truth in my word. If you don't believe that this is something else that God gives me, I have to look up these words, how to spell them even. <laughs> So what did he say? <laughs> Many are not seeking my face. They are going by what they think and feel. Isn't that how it's going? Well, the word really doesn't say that now. It says this. No, the word really does say exactly what it's saying. And you're not supposed to twist it. This will cause a church to stumble and fall. Those who are doing this atrocity will see the error of their ways only as you Go forth speaking and demonstrating the truth in my word. See, that's why God's given us a forehead of flint and a backbone of steel in these end days. We're going to have to go out there and unscramble. We're going to have to set the people free that's been held captive. This is why, you know, we have the religious spirit is a stench to God's nostrils. And we have to be walking in the spirit or we're going to go under. You know, I was reading something about what somebody learned in Bible school, and I said, thank God. <laughs> God won't let me go to Bible college whenever I first got saved. He said, no, I want my Holy Spirit to teach you all things. And I'm so glad I didn't have doctrine in me. And I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit teaches me all things. Each one of you sitting in here tonight the Holy Spirit should be the only one that's speaking through you. You should not have a voice. You need to only speak what the Holy Spirit wants people to hear, not what you think they should hear. And how many of you, you start talking to people, and all of a sudden you say, yeah, i got to be quiet, because God's not speaking. That was my flesh, and I have nothing that will help you. And I don't. I really don't. A lot of people think they have charisma, and they can help you. No, they hinder you. The Holy Spirit will speak the, only the truth. And it's the truth that sets us free. In the Gospel of John twelve forty, it is written, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, 
so they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts nor turn, and I would heal them. This, pa this passage speaks of spiritual blindness and the hardening of hearts, preventing people from recognizing the truth and turning to the truth of the word. The context of this verse is significant as it refers to the rejection of Jesus despite witnessing his glory. Now, whenever God said that you're, you will, oh, as a believer, you will uh, cause the blind to see, make the lame to walk. And, you know, we think, okay, that's physical. But why not spiritual? We will cause the, the blinded eyes, you know, the eyes that are believing stuff that's not true, we will take them the truth of the word and their eyes will be open to the truth. They will no longer be blind. You see what God's saying here? He really, really, really talked to me a lot about this. He said, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going out there and undoing what's been going on for years in the body of Christ with the truth of the word. Because he's going to give you the word and then he's going to show you the truth of the word. And that's what you're going to be taking to the people. Not what somebody just wanted. You know, these, these pastors out there, it really bothered me when I first got born again because the pastor say, if you send me $1,000, God will heal you. You know, come on. And do you know that one pastor who actually admitted he did that kind of stuff just to bilk the people? He's still out there a number one preacher. You know what? You know, why would you do that? God says freely you've been given free to give. You, you know, yeah, you can you can become a millionaire like the, a lot of the pastors are, and I don't I, I don't begrudge anybody anything, but they're going about it the wrong way. You know, God will supply your needs. You don't have to go out there and, and say a falsehood. God will supply your needs. And you know, often I think about Jesus, and I don't, you know, I don't come against anybody who has these big homes and ten jets and stuff like that. I really don't. But um, Jesus said, I have no place to lay my head. I don't even have a home. I don't have a pillow. And he walked the dirty streets, fields, whatever they were. And the only reason why he had some place to lay his head is because God would lay it upon some woman's heart to give, give him a room to sleep in. He had no home, no place to go home. But yet we want a great big mansion. We want all, all the beautiful things in it. We want big fancy cars. To prove what? To prove that you're, you do have charisma, that you can build the people of their money. You can tell them, you know, that's okay, God's grace. You're not going to go to hell. God's grace. And, you know, people are falling into hell every day because of God's grace. God's really serious about this. We have to be also. And I know the other day I said, you ought to write it in your book and somebody will read it. That came from God. Because some people will, rather than read the Bible, they'll read somebody's book. And the scripture's in there, and they're explaining the scripture. They will learn something from it. Are you understanding this? Isaiah 6, 1 through 10 also echoes a similar theme, emphasizing the spiritual condition of the people and their inability to perceive and turn. You know, it says there, God hardened their hearts. God blinded them so they couldn't see the truth of the word. Why did he do that? Because of the hardness of their hearts. So if you're sitting in here tonight and, and you can't really perceive or, or you understand the word, check yourself out. Have you, have you, first of all, hardened your heart against God? Have you ignored what God is telling you to do? Come on. I don't care what you go through. There's always a soul attached to it. You're going through that mess you're going through because there's a soul that's in that mess. And God needs those who will persevere, who will stand in the gap, who will take the beating like Jesus did for the cross. But no, we don't want to do that. We want to moan, groan, and complain. And we just want everything to be hunky-dory, and it doesn't work that way. 
I lived a better life, and this is the truth, as a not born again Christian and just going to church than I have since I became born again. I always went to church, I always lived a good life, but I was no threat to the devil. I was just going to church. Not saving souls, just going to church, loving people, taking them to church. But I was no threat to the devil. But once you become born again, then you're a threat to the devil because then you learn all about hearing the voice of Jesus. You Then you're led by the Spirit of God. And then you start tearing the kingdom of darkness down because then you're bringing others into the kingdom. So you have to learn like I did or just go ahead and quit complaining that if you're going to continue to walk with God, you're, the devil's going to continue to harass you. Are you listening? If you're looking for a smooth road, you're not going to find it walking, you know, selling yourself out to God. You sure didn't find it walking with the devil because there's a war going on in the heavenlies and the enemy's trying to kill you. Come on. I'm only alive today because I keep telling the enemy, you can't kill me. God gave you permission to harass me, but he said you could not touch my body to kill me. Come on. What kind of cross did God give you to bear? Some of you aren't as strong as I am, and he won't give you much of a cross to bear. But some of you are stronger, stronger than I am, younger than I am. And he's going to give you a hard cross to bear. But it's all because there's souls out there that need to be brought into the kingdom of light. Are you thinking about this? Are you truly understanding what God's saying to you? Did you understand, do you understand that once you became born again, then, then the suffering starts? Then the fighting starts. Then the other ministers will come against you. Other praise and worship leaders will come against you. They'll make your life a living hell if you allow them to. But if, if you know who you are in Christ, you might weep for a season, you know, night. But what comes in the morning? Joy. Sometimes I can't wait for morning. How about you? Some nights are really long. But joy always comes in the morning. God said, as you go forth with wisdom from above, the scriptures will open wide to you, and you shall prevail under the attacks of the evil one that does not want the unbeliever to see and hear the truth and be set free. As you go forth with wisdom from above, the scriptures will open wide to you and you shall prevail under the attacks of the evil one that does not want the unbeliever to see and hear the truth and be set free. Twisting of the word has ceased. My gospel shall no longer be twisted to satisfy itching ears. And you know, okay, so I got excited when God allowed me to raise the dead. I got excited when people got healed just because I was in the room. I got excited when I walked through the grocery store and people would yell out that they got healed. I got excited about that. But do you know what? This week I got excited over the fact that we are healing people of the twisted word that's been put in their spirit and it's taken them straight to hell. I got excited about when I read the blinded eyes will be open, that what the blinded eyes will be open to the word, the true gospel. I got excited when he said, when he says the lame will walk. You know, when you're walking in a twisted work, you're crippled. And then we're gonna we're God sending us forth to uncripple these people. Isn't that exciting? To me, that's more exciting than healing you uh, physically. Because once you're healed spiritually, all heaven's open to you. You, and, you know, and, and once you understand, that really, because God is, he's opening up the scriptures to all of us in here. We're seeing things we never saw before. With the teaching I did on, on the courtroom this morning, I didn't know anything. That was all God, and I just gave it to you. And Brother Brett said, I, I learned things I didn't know. 
See, God's you know little dumb me that doesn't know what about the courtroom except to go there. You know, I don't need any fancy words or any fancy ways. I just said, here I am. You know, naked and undone. And I need you to be my judge. And he just takes care of it. Isn't that exciting to know that's what we're now going to do? You know, well, you know, for me, I've seen all the miracles. You know, physical miracles. But now I want to see these spiritual miracles where the word of God is opened up so wide that even a little child will understand it. Amen. Let's admit it, some grown-ups act like little children. Brett. <laughs> All right, Deuteronomy 4.2, you shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. God is talking about the word, but you, do you ever think about when you're prophesying to somebody and if you're, if you're not a true prophet, you will add your thoughts into what God is speaking to that person. You're adding to God's word and that's messing people up. You just need to say only what God says and then shut up. There's many times I sit back there and I even hear things that I never say. But I did do something wrong the other day. God, somebody was up here and I don't remember who you were. And so just go home and cry about it. But God told me and something was going on so I didn't say it. But God said, it was a woman though. I have brought the alabaster box to her tonight. And thing, something happened and I forgot he said that. And it was a woman, but I don't know who you were. So each one of you can claim that, all right? Because when God brings the alabaster box to you, that's a powerful thing that he's doing to you and for you. God said, when I say deaf ears will be opened, this phrase has a double meaning to it. The first meaning here is the ears that cannot hear in the natural will be healed. The second is those who do not have ears to hear will be able to hear and understand what is being spoken by my anointed ones. And when he, when he said that, I thought about all the times he says, those who have ears to hear, you know. So we're deaf to God's word. And it's taken us straight down a path we do not want to go. God said, I have planted your roots deep this season. Now that excited me. And the enemy will not be able to uproot you as you go forth speaking liberty to the poor and depressed. God says, go forth undaunted by the cares of this world. Speak my word in season. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Go forth undaunted by the cares of this world. That means let go of the cares. Let go of the cares. You know, just like this, when I was near Wednesday night, you know, the enemy had talked, attacked my body with a different type of sickness, and I kept crying out to God and crying out to God, and in a gentle, sweet voice, he just said, Job. And so, I, you know, I was just going through another Job experience, but I wasn't happy with that. So I said, God, this is not right. I want, I want you, I don't care how you heal me, I want to be healed. So he spoke to Donna and told her what was wrong with me, and, and I got healed. We don't care where it comes from. You're the miracle as long as we receive the miracle, right? And God always told me, he said, daughter, you settle for second best. I want you to have the very best, and I will settle for second best, and I wanted to be healed because I couldn't even walk. It was so bad. The devil's a liar. If you truly want to know the deepness of God's word when you read it, if you really want him to open that word so wide that you understand it, you think, I think, I've been doing this for 40 years. I feel stupid, but here's the truth that I've overlooked all these years. I never saw it in a word. And there's a reason for that, because it wasn't time now is a time when God's opening, opening up the deepness of the word. So don't do what I did. I beat myself up. It just wasn't, a, it wasn't God's season to do that. But now it is. 
Now, do you want to walk in the fullness of time? Do you want to walk in the deepness of his word and know the absolute truth of what he's saying? We can be the John that was on uh, John the Revelator. You know, God revealed deep things to John. And God wants to do the very same thing to us. You know, when I first started, God said, never despise small beginnings. I never knew what he meant by that word, but what did he mean? We were going to be a small church. And don't get upset about that. Because he's with us. He's with us. God wants each one of you to desire the deep truth of his word. And if you really desire that tonight, the altar's open. And God said, for such a time as this, when the deep is going to be revealed to deep. So if you're seeking a deeper walk with God, this is your time to receive that.